Hello, brothers and sisters. I like to talk about something pretty important. Uh, some experienced observer of what's going on in the church says this is the shot that's been heard around the bishops' conference, and we're going to remember this day because of its implications for the spiritual battle that's going on, coming out into the open and getting more intense. But before I do that, I want to tell you about this booklet that my friend and collaborator Peter Herbeck wrote called Receiving Fire. And what it does is give a wonderful overview of the whole situation that we're facing these days and everything that's going on and how we can respond to it. So uh, because of the generosity of our donors who support the wide work of Renewal Ministries, we're able to offer this to you for free, no cost, just for the asking. We usually offer it to people who respond to our television program, The Choices We Face, but you know what? You YouTube viewers are just as equally important, and we'd like to make this booklet available to you uh, for free. So if you could just go to our website, renewalministries.net, and click on the free booklet here, uh, we'll send it off to you at no cost. Or you can also call the 800 number, but it's just easier to, to go to the website. And that information will be in the show notes right before, right below the video. So a really good booklet. Really encourage you to get it. Now, I'm going to title this video, Thank You, Bishop Papraki. Now, who's Bishop Papraki? Bishop Papraki is the Bishop of Springfield, Illinois, and he's also the incoming chairman of the American Bishops Committee for Canonical Affairs. And he's a, a very well-educated, very well-respected bishop. His exact title, he's chairman-elect of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Canonical Affairs and Church Governance. Well, a lot of us, a lot of us here at Renewal Ministries, a lot of you who are also alert to what's going on to the church and the world have been really, I don't know, I would say scandalized, shocked at some of the things we've heard that very prominent church leaders have been saying over the last couple of years. You know, we, of course, have the whole German Bishops' Conference that seems to be absolutely determined to, in their own words, create a new form of Catholicism that has accommodated itself to the surrounding pagan culture, particularly in the area of sexuality. And uh, people like Cardinal Marx, who's been a very key advisor to uh, Pope Francis has openly said that uh, there's nothing wrong with homosexual love. Uh, Bishop Batzing, uh, the current president of the German Bishops Conference, as you know, has said that he doesn't think that, you know, calling people to live chaste lives and live the church's teaching, Jesus' teaching on sexuality, uh, is realistic. And I, I just think that's one of the most evil things that's been said because everything that Jesus asks us to do, he's going to give us the grace to do it. Yes, if we're caught in a pattern of serious sin, it could be it could be a while, it could be a struggle, it could be difficult to reach the point of freedom, but people will reach the point of freedom if they want to, and if they are willing to avoid the near occasions of sin, and just all the other things to build our interior strength to resist temptation, whatever it might be. Then, of course, we have Cardinal Hollerich, uh, the Archbishop of Luxembourg, who Pope Francis has appointed as the head of the Synod of Bishops, and we're right in the process now of, kind of I don't know, developing what they call a new way of being church, uh, the synodal way. But it really looks like the synodal way is like a, a process trying to move the church somewhat in the same direction as the German Bishops' Conference is moving. And Cardinal Hollerich has even said that the sociological and scientific ever, evidence no longer support the Catholic teaching on homosexuality. Uh, when he had a press uh, conference at the Vatican recently, he was asked the question about you know, how the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith just recently, just within the last few years, kind of came out and said, no, we can't bless same-sex uh, relationships because they're sinful. That, of course, people it caused you know, certain people around the world to have a cow, as the expression goes. And so when he was asked about this at the press conference, he said, well, I don't consider it a closed question. 
and a lot of people are saying that they're they're dragging out the synodal process uh, not just to one conference at one synod in October, but another one a year from now because it's going to take a while to get people softened up and willing to go in this direction. And maybe it's going to take some more appointments, some more appointments from the Pope of uh, bishops that are sympathetic to this direction. So whatever it is, something, something not good is going on. And then we, of course, have uh, bishops here in the United States who have made clear their sympathies in this direction. The Archbishop of uh, New Mexico, the uh, Cardinal in San Diego, the Cardinal in Chicago, the Cardinal in Newark, New Jersey. So it's just a whole network of people now that seem to be saying, let's move in a different direction. And then it's of course the, the famous Father James Martin who says, let's be a more inclusive church and let's really include the LGBTQ whatever community but without a word of repentance, without a word of sharing the good news that we can be free of being slaves to sexual sin, without a word of the truth that God created us male and female for the purpose of holy marriage between a man and a woman for the purpose of bringing new life and every exercise of genital sexuality outside of holy marriage is offensive to the Lord and damaging to people. If we love people, we got to tell them the truth about the purpose of sexuality. We got to tell them the truth about the ability to receive grace from the Lord to live chaste lives, which all of us have to do in different ways at different times. And then we have so many bishops who welcome Father James Martin to bring this message of inclusion without repentance into their dioceses, and others like Archbishop Chapu, the uh, recently retired. Archbishop of Philadelphia is saying, no, there's serious problems here. He doesn't tell the whole truth. So we got division amongst the American bishops. We got divisions amongst leading cardinals and bishops in the world right now. And we have sort of confusing signals coming out of Rome. The uh, recent document that the Synod Office published uh, about what, what they've heard when they've listened to people all around the world, you know, some people who are very solid church observers and church leaders have said it's the most incoherent document they've ever seen come out from Rome. But as troubling as all these things are, one of the things that's also been troubling is why aren't people speaking out about this? Why aren't church leaders? Why aren't Rome? Why isn't the Pope correcting people who are directly contradicting the faith in really important areas? Well, we've had a We've, Archbishop Aquila in Denver has done some really great things in showing the, the false premises of the German Synod. Uh, but recently, the Cardinal in San Diego, Cardinal McElroy, wrote an article for America Magazine that seemed to be a tipping point. And in this article, he said that he wants to dismantle structures of exclusion in the Catholic Church and allow people to approach the Eucharist, uh, whatever their moral state is before the Lord, uh, as long as they're baptized. And he said, we can't exclude people on the basis of who's living a chaste life and who isn't living a chaste life. And we have to be completely welcoming, uh, without limits, it appears, uh, to people who are living an act of sexual sin, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, whether it's getting uh, divorced and remarried without getting an annulment, whatever it is. Uh, and, and this, of course, is contradictory to what the church teaches. This is contradictory to what the Apostle Paul teaches about the Eucharist, about approaching it with reverence and fear of the Lord and, and making sure that your life is right with the Lord before you approach the Eucharist. But the thing that really kind of now has kind of given a note of hope but also a note of, wow, we are really in a battle. There is not unity amongst the bishops. and There's a fight going on for the faith amongst our leaders. So Bishop Propaki, uh, just a few days ago, published an article in First Things magazine where he basically, where he quotes exactly some of the things that Cardinal McElroy has said, where he makes reference to some of the things that Cardinal Hollerick has written about homosexuality. And he basically said, these statements 
are heretical. These statements are contradicting church doctrine on the Eucharist and church doctrine on sexuality. And then he goes on to say that, as a matter of fact, somebody who does that in a persistent, obstinate way is actually a heretic. People have been very reluctant to use that word in polite society. Some, of course, have used it irresponsibly, labeling people heretics without knowing what it really means. But to call some of your fellow bishops, he didn't name Cardinal McElroy's name, he didn't name Cardinal Hallrich's name, but he quoted and clearly referred to them. He says he didn't want it to be about personalities, he wanted it to be about positions, but it's really clear who holds these positions. It's absolutely clear. And uh, he basically said that if you're denying what's revealed to us in sacred scripture and tradition, what's contained in the Catechism of the Catholic Church concerning the holiness of the Eucharist and the need to confess serious sin and be reconciled to the Lord before we receive it, uh, that's, that's heresy. He says if we deny what Jesus tells us about the purpose of sexuality, and, and what, what Paul warns us about, he says, people who do these things, all kinds of sexual morality, including homosexual acts, not talking about homosexual orientation or temptation, but doing things that Christ says you should not do, that Paul says you should not do, that the Catechism of the Catholic Church says this is gravely wrong, it's offensive to God, and it hurts the people involved in these things. He says, if you don't believe that, if you don't teach that, you're, you're a heretic. But then he goes on to say, you don't have to wait to be formally excommunicated by the Pope, who's the only one who can excommunicate cardinals, but you've been automatically excommunicated. It's a, a Latin phrase, latte sententia, or something like that. And it says you're automatically excommunicated for holding heretical views and, and being obstinate in holding them. Now, Bishop Proprosky, uh, says he hopes, uh, I'll, I'll kind of quote it here at the end of his article. He says, he hopes that people can retract, can repent. He hopes that people will, uh, who hold these views, will see the error of their ways and accept the fraternal correction that he's offering. And there's other bishops that are offering fraternal correction now too. Cardinal McElroy kind of tipped things over and a lot of bishops don't feel like we can't we can't remain silent anymore. Bishop Proprocki said, I can't remain silent anymore because when evil is not corrected, when error is not corrected, uh, it spreads and it poisons the whole body. And quite honestly, the fear of correcting error on the part of bishops has led us to a very, very weakened state as the Catholic Church today. Error has been, been taught in so many ways, at so many levels, in so many religious education classes, in, in, in so many universities, it still is today, uh, without being effectively corrected, and the evil has spread. Until now, you know, every time they do an opinion poll about what Catholics believe, Catholics believe few and fewer things that the Catholic Church teaches because there hasn't been effective uh, authoritative, energetic, urgent correction of these errors that are just fl flooding into the world and flooding into the church. So Bishop Proprocki does say he hopes that this will bring repentance, but he says that a welcoming church, an inclusive church, isn't a church that says anything goes. I remember Cardinal Dolan one day said that, uh, you know, everybody's welcome, but not everything goes. The purpose of welcoming to people to the Catholic Church is welcoming them to an encounter with Christ, welcoming them into faith, welcoming them to repentance, welcoming them to become a disciple of Jesus, to, to learn from him, to follow him, to love him, to allow the Holy Spirit to heal our disordered desires and bring us into deeper and deeper levels of unity. Now, one of the uh, very balanced, very... Uh, measured uh, viewers of what's happening in the church today, some of the writers for the pillar, says this in their commentary. He says, yes, 
You read that right. The Bishop of Springfield, Illinois, formally argued this morning that the Cardinal Archbishop of San Diego has committed a heresy and that he thus might have incurred an excommunication and that he thus should be prevented by the Pope from voting on a future conclave. The, uh, the title of Bishop Proprocki's article is Imagining a Heretical Cardinal. It turns out we, we have some, no question about it. Then he says, what would happen to people's confidence in the conclave that elects the next pope if we knew that cardinals were there who in Deo, were, de facto were, were heretics and didn't believe parts of what the Catholic Church teaches? And, and, and Bishop Propraki ends by saying he hopes that Pope Francis would never let that happen, that these cardinals would be removed that they would be formally disciplined, even if they are automatically excommunicated and not be allowed to, to guide the future in the teaching of the church. So um, another thing that the authors in the pillar say, Propraki's essay is the shot heard round the conference. Talking about the bishops of conference, the bishops conference in the United States. He says, I don't hyperbole hyperbole, I don't do that by disposition. I'd rather be measured and correct than inflammatory or exaggerated. But I don't want either to downplay the magnitude of the conflict in which American bishops are now engaged. As the history of the church in America is written, February 28th, 2023 will likely be a day well noted as the day that Bishop Rocky published his essay. We'll give links to his essay and Oh, Archbishop Quilla's response and Archbishop Nauman's response uh, below the uh, the video. But uh, I'd like to end by again saying that we have the booklet available for you at no cost just for the asking. You can just kind of go to our website and, and ask for it. Peter Herbeck's booklet, Receiving Fire. But I'd also like to sincerely ask you to join me in prayer for Bishop Brocky. He's going to be attacked. He's going to be slandered. Terrible things are going to be said about him. But as he said in one of his interviews, that when the truth is at stake, you can't pretend that there's unity amongst the leaders of the church. And that's really true. And I think that's a tremendous sign of hope that more and more bishops are starting to stand up and say, you know what? That's not the truth, and this is what Christ has revealed to us, and this is what it really means to be a Catholic. So God bless Bishop Propraki. God bless Bishop Propraki, and let's pray for him.